fifth iteration of academic year 2018 interagency brown bag lecture series. The series wouldn't be possible without our financial sponsors, so we thank the First Command Financial Services Group for sponsoring. Thank you all. Today's presentation should prove to be both educational and enlightening. We're going to learn about an organization that serves kind of as a chamber of commerce for federal agencies, but it also provides synergistic services for many agencies that we find very useful. Now, you might be wondering, what is this Federal Executive Board? There are Federal Executive Boards all across the country, and here in a moment we're going to learn a little bit more about that. They work in major metropolitan areas, and they do all kinds of things that enhance agencies, federal employees, and their communities. But you may be thinking, okay, I deal in national security issues. How could a Federal Executive Board be of interest to me? Well, hopefully Mr. Heisel's presentation will answer that question. I'll preview by saying that the role that the Federal Executive Board plays in interagency cooperation and coordination at the local level is unmatched. I'll offer three items for your consideration. Your future jobs here in CONUS are going to put you in a position most likely whereby your mission will require you to work with other federal agencies. If you know that a Federal Executive Board exists in your area, that's one avenue that you can use to do that interagency cooperation. Or you'll find that if you're a major installation that has a federal executive board near it, that certainly you can improve the quality of life of your soldiers and their families by doing outreach through the federal executive board. And lastly, as a taxpayer, you should feel good by, about the fact that I think Mr. Huss is going to highlight that the federal executive board does many things that help make things efficient and save tax dollars, our tax dollars. So it's my pleasure to introduce today's speaker. Mr. Heisel has led the Kansas City, Greater Kansas City Area Federal Executive Board since 2013. He took that position after serving as a senior program manager at the Office of Personnel Management. Mr. Heisel holds a Bachelor of Business Administration from Thomas Edison State University and is very active in his community as a volunteer. Please welcome the Executive Director of the Greater Kansas City Federal Executive Board, Mr. Larry Heisel. Thank you, Ron. Appreciate it. All right, well, good afternoon, everyone. How many of you before uh, Rod's um, introduction had ever heard of the Federal Executive Board? A couple of you. That's, that's about usual. So how many of you that raised your hands know what a FEB is all about? Okay, that's great. Well, and I think Rod really brought, kind of summed it all up. Uh, we are a resource for you. Uh, your, your life of right now consists of a lot of knowledge within DOD and and the the, uh, the army, the uh, you know the Department of Defense, we are your way to really reach out to those civilian agencies as well. So what we're going to talk about today is really the overview of what the FEB is and kind of show you what we've done th through this past year, but also give you a sense of the federal presence in the Kansas City, Missouri area. Because um, how many of you were aware that can that uh, the federal government was the, is the largest uh, employer in the Kansas City area? So, about the same. So, if you were thinking about retiring, you know, you could re retire right here. There's lots of jobs that are available. So, what is the FEB program? Uh, this program was designed over 50 years ago. It was uh, brought into fruition through the uh, Kennedy administration. At that time, they looked at uh, how can we touch all of our employees throughout the entire uh, United States. And they found that 85% of all the, of the federal employees were actually out in the field. They weren't in the, the beltway. So they developed a program that hopefully they would be able to reach out to a greater, greater extent those employees in the field and start uh, you know, national programs and develop them more into regional programs. So we are overseen by the Office of Personnel Management. Uh, we, there's 28 of us across the country. We're all, basically when the, the one thing they say is once you've seen one FEB, you've seen one FEB. Because while we have the same business lines that we'll co go over, we all run a little bit different, and we're all employed differently as well. We're not an appropriated organization, so what that means is we're funded by different, different uh, agencies across the country. So, for example, I'm technically I'm an OPM employee, but I'm paid for by uh, Federal Highway, FAA, and a little bit of dollars from OPM. Uh, Department of Defense covers the salaries in uh, St. Louis as well as San Antonio. 
GSA covers the salaries for Chicago, so on and on. So again, we have a sponsored program. I like to say we're really kind of professional beggars. You know, everything that we do, we're, we're trying to find a way to, to exist. In fact, uh, um, again, GSA, we're actually housed within the General Services Administration in the downtown Kansas City area. Again, we're begging for, for space. So we're begging you for attention as far as how we can improve upon our, uh, our uh, mission as well. So 28 FEBs across the country, uh, again, in the 10, 10 regional office complexes or the uh, you know, areas that have large contingencies of federal employees. So and what we're meant to do, and we'll show how that is, we'll provide a forum where, where federal employees and federal agencies can uh, participate and get involved and, and react to each other. Here you kind of see where the 10, the 10 uh, regional offices are in the in the nation. So the Heartland region covers Missouri, Kansas, Iowa, and Nebraska. And again, based here, here in the Kansas City. Why is there a need for, uh, for FEB here in Kansas City? This is an example, not all the agencies, but this is an example of the agencies that report directly to the White House or to, to DC. In the Kansas City area, there's over 160 different federal agencies that all report to headquarters. And that's the FEB member is actually the senior most official of this agency. So there are 160 different officials reporting directly to uh, their headquarters. We're the ones that get them to communicate locally. So, and we'll show you how that is. But a lot of times when you look at Department of Homeland Security, you don't think, well, Homeland Security encompasses TSA, covers U Citizenship and Immigration Service, covers Customs, covers U uh, some U.S. Marshal's office uh, as far as the the, um, the transportation portion. So, I mean, covers the Coast Guard. Again, it's a big agency that's, uh, that falls underneath that. A lot of times, they don't know what, what's going on locally. They have their own mission. They're focusing on that, which is great. We try to remind them, hey, did you know, EPA, did you know Social Security is working on the same, same type of problem? So we hope to get them together and help with that process. Again, our purpose, strength and coordination of activities outside of uh, Washington, D.C., and really have a closer coordination with the, those agencies. So again, I'm on the road most of the time meeting with agency heads, trying to learn what's, what's going on out there and sharing the information that, that's, that's going on in the Kansas City area. The presence in Kansas City, like I said, it's the largest employer in Kansas City. Uh, when we add in the contractors uh, that uh, the uh, federal government to, um, employees in the Kansas City area, and I should say this also includes Fort Leavenworth because we consider you in the metropolitan area as well. Over 41,000 federal employees and contractors in this great, greater Can Kansas City area. That is a payroll that exceeds over three billion dollars, so a big economic impact for the, for the community. And when you look at the other businesses that, that are that are involved in supporting the the federal government. It's an additional $1.2 billion comes off that. You see up top there some of our largest employers. The D Department of Defense is one of the, one of, the, of course, the largest one. Then we have Veterans Affairs. IRS have a, has a large uh, group of employees here. Uh, Department of Homeland Security. Again, there's a lot of, lot of, uh, um, a lot of uh, regional offices that you'll see up there. So, and of course, the federal workspace, uh, that's consistently going becoming less and less but over 2.1 million square feet of leased and known space a good part of that is actually you know again in the downtown federal area working on the ur urban development as well so here are some u unique agencies that are found in the Kansas City area that that uh, that support the country really Kansas City is the entry point to America while we're not on the border we're the ones that make it possible for folks to come into the United States the U.S. Citizenship and Immigration Service, their National Benefits Center, is located in Lee Summit, and also they have a, a sub-building over in Overland Park. They are a reimbursable service that processes all the immigration applications in, in the country. So they have a, a mission to make sure that all those are reviewed and, and approved. Uh, once that happens, if they are approved, we also have the card processing center. So all the green cards and red cards come out of the Kansas City area as well. Uh, all the records for immigration, uh, citizenship and immigration services are also stored in the Kansas City area over the Lee Summit Caves. 
providing security to our nation, we all know how important Fort Leavenworth is, the intellectual fort of, of the Army. Uh, Lake City Army ammunition plant that, uh, that uh, serves up all the uh, small caliber ammunition for all NATO countries is located here in the Kansas City area. The National Nuclear Security Administration, who's, uh, who we contract with uh, um, Honeywell, they actually process 85% of a nuclear weapon is done in South Kansas City. Nothing radioactive, but it's all actually been put together in Kansas City. So again, how many of you are longtime Kansas City folks and remember Bindex or Allied Signal? Don't remember that? Their story used to be, oh yeah, we make washers and dryers. It used to be a secret what they were, Honeywell and the business for them. That's, so that's what they were making. Um, also agencies that are watch, that are here in the Kansas City area, watch the skies, the Olathe Air Traffic Control Center touches 13 states out of the, out of the Olathe, Kansas. And basically any, anything that goes over the uh, Rocky Mountains is touched by the uh, Olathe Traffic, Air Traffic Control Center. The National Aviation Severe Weather Service, which is up by the airport in the Department of, uh, of, the Department of Commerce and NOAA, they actually, they cover all the aviation severe weather uh, watches and forecasts for, for the complete Western Hemisphere. So all of America and all of our, all of the Americas, if you will, uh, is touched by that station up, by, up uh, in Kansas City. We're also the nation's checkbook. We have uh, one of what will be only two left of the IRS campuses in downtown uh, uh, by the Union Station that, cover, that uh, will currently employs 2,500 folks. They are combining internal revenue campuses across the country. We'll, this will probably get up to about 5,000 by, by 2025. But we're also, so we're collecting the money there, putting in the bank, but we're also through the Bureau of Fiscal Service, we're writing the checks to all Americans in all foreign countries. 99.9% .9 of every payment from the United States comes out of Kansas City. All Social Security checks, all Veterans Employment checks, anything from the VA comes out of Kansas City from the Bureau of Fiscal Services. If there is a grant to, from Nicaragua or to uh, Nigeria, that comes out of that, that office. Uh, and then I like to say we're nation, the nation's attic. I can't say that because Smithsonian already took that. So I say we're the storage pod for, uh, for the federal agencies. Uh, not only is uh, U.S. Citizenship and Immigration Service uh, store all the records here, but on the national side, the uh, National Archives Records Administration, their central offices, has four different locations in the Kansas City area. All Social Security documents, all uh, U.S. Postal Service documents, all Internal Revenue paper documents are stored in the caves here in Kansas City because we had the perfect climate in our limestone cave systems throughout the uh, throughout uh, Independence in North Kansas City and even some in the Lenox area. If you have any questions, please feel free to ask as we go, go along. So I want to touch on, there's three lines of business that we, uh, that we perform on an annual basis. These are all the similar lines that every federal executive board does, but sometimes we do do it differently. As Rod said, you know, one of our jobs is to become, to be a, a tax, or a, a savings to the taxpayers. You go, so, uh, and you'll see how we do that. So our first line is emergency preparedness and security and employee safety. So what falls underneath that is we have the first one, our emergency dismissal plan, or what we like to call our 3 a.m. club. This is the group of about a dozen employees when there is a, a strong snowstorm or uh, bad weather or such, get up at 3 a.m and make a recommendation to all the federal agencies in the Kansas City area, hey, may want to do a late arrival or heaven forbid we close down for the, for the day. That doesn't happen unless the governors of the, both states say, hey, you, you need to get off the roads. But uh, typically what we do is, what we try to do is be proactive. A lot of the federal agencies now are able to telework, so we will get a notice out to them by two o'clock the pr prior day or previous day and say, hey, take your computers home and we'll let you know if you need to come in tomorrow or just decide to telework tomorrow. That way we get people off the roads, make sure it's safe, and ultimately make sure our employees are safe. This group also expands if there was a, 
so if there was active terrorism or such, that would expand to the FBI, U.S. Attorney's Office, FDA, EPA. So the, all those agency heads would also be part of that as well. In the Kansas City area, we have four close points of dispensing or pods. How many of you are familiar with the pods process? Actually, um, Leavenworth has their own pod itself. But what that is is, for example, if there's an influenza outbreak and medication needed to get out to the entire public, or maybe you're at the Chiefs game on Saturday night and someone s sprays anthrax over the stadium. So what do we do? It's, a, it's upon the municipality or, in this case, the, the, uh, the post to provide medication to all of their residents. So in Kansas City, we're the first uh, city in the nation to work with our health department to open up what we call closed pods. And what that does is we have over 400 trained employees. We train federal employees to work this uh, point of dispensing. And if there was such a emergency, they, our federal employees could go to that pod location, pick up medication for themselves, their families, their immediate family, if they will. The health department is thrilled with that because basically it takes off 160,000 people off their rosters in, in time of emergency. So that's, those are people that would normally be at, showing up at the stadium or at Bartle Hall to get medication. So we're doing the, doing the, uh, the community a service. We're also one of the uh, pilot programs to take those 400 volunteers that we've already trained to go out and also work the, uh, the area uh, points of dispensings as well. So again, when we talk about interagency effort and putting that together, when that happens, what happens is uh, CDC sends in the med med medication. Uh, it's picked up by USDA because they have a series of panel trucks here in the Kansas City area take it to one of those locations. The locations are a main federal building, a USDA building on the south side of town, uh, the uh, Citizenship and Immigration Service and Lee Summit, and also IRS campus. So they take it there, followed by the federal police services, and then we have uh, those 400 volunteers that consist of 40 different agencies that help, help, help uh, dispense that medication. Um, we also maintain emergency notification system. So again, in, in times of emergency, we are able to to notify and uh, get in connection with any of our, our key, uh, key employees to make sure that they're aware of what needs to be done and where we need to go to. Uh, we organize the Field Federal Safety Health Council, which uh, every federal agency is supposed to be part of. Uh, that is actually a, a program that's overseen by OSHA, and that's to make sure that there's, well, you understand OSHA laws, to make sure that's also being um, operated in, in uh, same fashion as the public, so uh, we, they meet on a monthly basis. And also on a monthly basis, we have our Kansas City Regional Coop Working Group. And what they do, if you're not aware, every federal agency after 9-11, uh, there were coop exercises in booklets before 9-11, but after 9-11 they said, do we know, hey, where is that coop book? Take it off, dust off, dust off the top. Uh, no one ever practiced it. So after 9-11, it was required that every agency uh, practices their, their COOP plan e each year. So what the COOP working group does each year is develop a exercise that all the agencies can work together because in a true emergency, every agency is going to be, be working together. Uh, last year, to kind of give you an example, it was an active shooter live scenario. What we did was we, we had, uh, uh, in collaboration with the fire department, the SWAT teams, federal police service, we went into a, an old uh, federal building that had been vacated, and we basically put on a live scenario with, with blanks, but live, you know, live rounds to go through what that would be about. And the emergency managers were there to kind of see what actions would they actually take when they, they come in and have that scenario. Now, our COOP exercise, that we run the last week in August each year, which had over 400 federal employees participate. What that was, was, okay, you've had this active shooter scenario. So what happens after that? So you immediately coop, but again, in coop, you have to be able to stand up your office within 24 hours. If you can't, you have to permanently be, into, be in a, uh, your coop facility for however, however long and then you go into what they call a reconstitution. A reconstitution is starting, business, starting your business back up. Um, 
we'll take for the take for example the naval, the uh, naval yard shooting took them 18 months before they got back in those offices. That's how long it could be if there was actually a true active shooter thing. So what do you do if you have active shoot, shooter happen in your office? What, you know, what is the scenario? So they practice that to, so when, if heaven forbid that ever happens, they know what to do, they know where to go. And often many of the agencies are, they're their own coop partners. So if something happens at General Services Administration, they coop to uh, to Lee Summit, or they make you know they they'll go vice versa to make sure that there is a support there. Any questions on this line of business? Okay. Let's see. So our second line of business is probably what keeps us busiest, but this is the one that actually is the biggest cost savings component for uh, for the FEB, and that is our workforce development and support. Um, we look at the talents that are in our, uh, in our uh, region and try to make the most of that. Um, and I'm going to give you an idea of some of the things that we, we've done each year. And if, if you will pardon me on, on the graphics here, you'll kind of get to see what it is. We are an office of two people, so we're pretty much running all the time. But last year we had what we called our uh, FEB I training on the executive core qualifications. How many are you familiar with the, the executive core qualifications? You will be if you become, citizen, or become civilian uh, uh, federal employees. Those are the five things that OPM looks at to make sure that as a manager that you're following through and making the biggest impact on the fed federal government. So this was a nine month program that we put managers through to get them up to date and, make, and strengthen their skills as much as possible. Um, each year we offer a supervisor refresher training uh, to, um, again, interagency training to, for uh, employees there. We also, last year, a journey to extraordinary, how to properly react to federal employees. And again, it goes back, there's generation training, which I'm sure you've all been about, but there's also, within the generation is tra training, it's, there's also a unique difference as far as the, the impact of passion people have towards working for the government now compared they from when they did. So again, you, they really kind of looked at the, the, the warm fuzzies of working for the government or working with individuals of different thought patterns. So, so when you look at, you know, you understand the, that uh, the generation training, you know, how do you, how do you really work with the different emotions of, of folks as well? Um, we also, uh, one of four, four areas in the country that does a presidential management council interagency rotation program. That takes a high, high potential grade 13 on up and basically puts them on a six month detail at a different agency. So basically, and I'm sure many of you are familiar with the senior executive service program or SES program. That's one of the things they're looking for when you apply to be part of the SES program. What rotations have you done? Now, again, in the DOD, you do lots of rotations or deployments or such like that. But in the civilian side, you don't have that opportunity. So, again, we're of only four, four cities in the, the country outside of D.C. that does that. On top of that, we had dealing with poor performers. Actually, these next two days, we're, we're put, putting that on. Uh, we had uh, managing multiple priorities, time management training. We had... Uh, we, we have a program that actually is a combination is, and came from the uh, a Command General Staff College and the pro part of the program they g put uh, their, uh, their fellows through KU. We developed with them a, a KU Senior Executive Leadership Seminar that's, uh, that's also coming up here in February. We had a uh, Executive Women in Motion, a program just for women that are, are looking to, uh, to grow in the government in the dispensable assistant workshops, business writing. What we found the last couple years was soft skills training within the, the federal side. There's a lot of times these folks have been, been in the government for 20 years. They for, forgot how to properly uh, uh, write and use pr uh, proper grammar. So we've, we've opened that up and, and made that available. Uh, crucial conversations training, which is being big, is, uh, big throughout the the government now. Understanding and managing the four generations training as you see. Other ones, six core competencies of successful leader, leadership environment, 
some one-off trainings, or this one would be in a Kirkpatrick evaluation training. And this is a good example of things that may just happen. We'll have, what we try to do is have at least two different trainings, executive trainings each year that's, uh, or excuse me, each month that uh, federal employees can, uh, can participate in. Some are reimbursable. As I said, we're not an appropriate agency, so uh, we have to sometimes charge money to, to get in that. A good example, though, with like the business writing class, business writing, if you would go to the same business writing course in Overland Park, it would be $299. So because we're buying for a whole group of federal employees, we're able to just charge $149. So really half of what the, the course normally would. So again, that's the cost savings. But if we find where there's a, a need, like the Kirkpatrick Evaluation Certification, that was one that is a, you know, it's, it's kind of a unique program, but it's a pricey program. It costs $1,800. Um, so, but there are a number of federal employees, agencies that were interested in it. We are able to bring them in, negotiate a price, and got them down to actually where the, when said it was done, it was $600 per, per attendee. So again, we're able to use those numbers to bring down the cost for our, our federal employees. Uh, you see this big wave in the background. You probably all, all have heard the uh, wave of retirements that's gonna be happening over the next five years. Certainly you've, you've seen that. Well, it's happening right now. Uh, last year, each year we put on, uh, uh, last year we put on four pre-retirement seminars, one being up here in, at Fort Leavenworth. Um, and I had over 700 folks attend that. So again, there's a good number of folks that are looking at that, and that's great. The OPM encourages uh, federal agencies to touch a federal employee, give them at least, uh, touch their awareness three times within their career. So what we try to do is offer a early or mid-career seminar sometime earlier on in their, their, uh, their career, and then also come back with this pre-retirement -reti pre seminar. Uh, we also, for those folks that are retiring and not sure what they're going to do, we offer a free life after retirement with the Small Business Administration and, and s several of their, uh, their uh, partners to kind of give them an idea, hey, you want to open your own business, this may be something to do. So again, kind of give them an idea. And for the first time, we offered a What's in Your Wallet financial workshop. And that was a, a program that uh, came from us from D.C., but it included TSP, um, the SEC, because there is a big issue with, uh, in the nation with the Security Exchange Commission, there are a lot of, uh, a lot of a, uh, uh, financial brokers that are trying to get federal employees to roll over their TSP into annuities, and, and they're basically being taken. I mean, they're, they're losing, losing their money. In fact, so much so that some of the federal agencies have actually been sued because, hey, you let this person in here and they, you know, I lost, you know, twenty thousand dollars. What are you going to do? You shouldn't give that permission. So that's one of the things they wanted to roll out and make sure that hey, you need to know where that is. And that's why, really, when it comes back to it, that's why we do the pre-retirement seminars, and we have very neutral parties where they're not not getting your names or such to kind of find out the the real gist of uh, what you're what you're going over. And then finally, we had uh, someone from Fort Level or excuse me, Fort Riley. Um, that with the Army Benefits Center that came and talked about the SERS and PERS program. Uh, we do a lot of work on diversity education. Uh, we have a, a yearly Martin Luther King uh, training luncheon um, in January. A lot of community outreach, several different special emphasis programs uh, through our diversity education and culture awareness committee. They meet monthly. They're uh, diversity officers of different federal agencies and they they work on programs that they can take back to their agencies to talk about the Special Emphasis Month, whether it's uh, Federal Women's Month or, or uh, National, uh, uh, National Native American uh, uh, Recognition Month or such like that. Some of the new things we've done, uh, the Kansas City Federal Innovation Showcase. Again, this is the only type of thing in, that's been done in the nation. For the last three years, we've had a, uh, we basically have had a, a contest, kind of almost like a science fair, and we've had nominations for folks that have done throughout the, the Kansas City a agencies innovative things in their workplace. And then we bring them to the Truman Library in one day in August, 
and we have a they they present and we had a, have a panel of judges that basically uh, decide what's the best. Two years ago, we actually had the uh, director from OPM that was one of the judges that kind of went through that. So it really kind of it's a recognition program, recognition event for those people thinking outside the 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 box, and also kind of gives the idea. It's there's a lot of notes that goes back to DC. Hey, did you know this is going on? And we've had even from the first thing that the first uh, showcase we had, we've had three programs that have gone national. It started at at VA at, here in Kansas City and gone through the national VA program. Uh, we also um, to try to encourage more hiring in the government, we also run an intern enrichment program. So for those interns during the summertime or those pathway students to get them aware of what's uh, going on in the government. One of our bis biggest uh, cost avoidance programs is our uh, alternative dispute or, or assured neutrals program. In Kansas City, we have over 80 trained mediators that if you have a workplace con conflict, maybe there's two managers who can't get along, or manager or employee, we have mediators that will say it's in IRS, we'll have someone from EPA go out and try to mediate that program. We have over a 70% uh, success rate in, in doing that. And that's important because those other 30% that don't get, get resolved, they're gonna go to EEO complaint, and each EEO complaint costs over $70,000 on average. So it's a, it's a big deal to try to get that, that program, uh, you know, try to get that settled between those two parties before it goes to that complaint. So, and again, we talked a little bit on that, but the response to recruitment and retention, again, we know a lot of folks are, uh, are retiring. You know, how do we get that, that knowledge? How do we save that knowledge? And also, how do we recruit more people in, into that? So we've worked with uh, several of the uh, uh, universities. We have a tuition discount with the University of Kansas for uh, um, um, continuous learning, they, have, they give a 10% uh, discount on certain, certain classes. Uh, OPM has negotiated uh, uh, tuition discounts for federal employees, as in, in some cases also spouses and, uh, and uh, children, and you can find that at the OP OPM uh, uh, Academic Alliance uh, website, off the OPM website. Um, but information, really kind of sharing our HR committee comes together each month and kind of shares information. If there's job openings, uh, we'll have that. We'll have, we have a monthly webinar that we put on this last, uh, the first Wednesday every month. This last month we talked about USA Jobs. How many of you have been on USA, USA Jobs? A few of you, it's a lot of fun, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so how to negotiate that, that website. So again, trying to continuous learning for, uh, not only for the agency head, but all for the, all the federal employees. And lastly under this is our, our, our portion of recognition. So during Public Employees Recognition Week, we honor our employees, have a uh, recognition ceremony for uh, in different criteria. We're also the only city in the country that actually has a joint ceremony with the city and county as well. So all together out, just out off that line of business that we can substantiate over three and a half million dollars in, in savings from just j just those things that we were able to do. So again, drop in the bucket for the uh, for the budget, but again, it's uh, three and a half million dollars that the taxpayers are are avoiding right now. Any questions on this portion? Or yes. Is this for the budget year, just for current year? That's or? just for the, that's yes, that's actually 2017. I, I have a question. Uh -huh. So the federal employee, for your your element in Kansas City. So you're trying to pull all these different pieces together, 41,000 employees in Kansas City. Right. What did you say you have for staffing? Two people. Yeah, I thought I heard that. That's how, right, yeah. How so, do you make that work? How can you possibly be effective with two people without the span of control? And we're going to touch on this in the next business line, but okay. basically what a lot of what we do is done by committees. And you either love them or hate them, we love them because we have very active committees. We have 12 different committees, uh, nine that are, sta sta are, are, uh, are annual committees and some are just seasonal committees. Uh, so we have, we have our ADR committee, or shared neutrals program that meet on a monthly basis. Uh, we have uh, our HR committee, so our HR professionals meet on a monthly basis. We have an education training committee that helps us 
decide and, and put on some of the, those trainings. Um, we will have uh, our, our COOP working group we talked about, the Federal Field Safety Health Council. Uh, in this, you're gonna see the Small Business, um, um, Small Business Committee, the uh, Veterans Affairs Committee, the Wellness, Regional Wellness Committee. So a lot, for someone that really hates meetings, I go to a lot of them. <laughs> So, uh, you know, again, we have, a, we, we have a very active, and I probably think we, we have had probably the most supportive FEB, and again, when I talk about FEB, it's, it's those senior officials, and each year on an annual basis, we, we ask for volunteers, verify with them, these are the folks that have been on it before, can, you know, can you add people, or are there some that you would like to take off? Yes, sir. So, um, there's a lot of really cool programs there. Mm -hmm. Uh, do you have an outreach committee? Because how does how does you know Govy find out about these things? I mean, there's a lot of cool things there. How do the 41,000 of us in just this area, not counting Omaha and St. Louis and all those other places that you're covering? Yep. Because that's your region. Mm -hmm. How the heck do we Govies find those things? Because uh, do you have an outreach program, or how do how do we find out? Or is it or do I have to go searching for you? Well. You probably have to search for me more more than not. Uh, our outreach uh, program and our let's talk about our, our uh, distribution uh, protocol, if you will. Again, the main distribution is our senior most official. Uh, in this case, in the the post here, it would be the lieutenant you know lieutenant general or Kirby Brown basically is our main contact here. So we hope that Kirby distributes the information as he see fit, sees fit throughout the, the, uh, the area. Now, knowing how busy he is, we also, again, what we, what we try to do is each year to get those committee members. So if it's something as far as with HR, we have, uh, we'll have uh, the HR person, hey, there, this is the new, new uh, balance and leave notice that's coming out this year. So we, we uh, have a, a, basically a distribution to that, uh, to that HR person that, again, hopefully is now moving that up instead of moving it down. If it's education, we have Joe Osborne who uh, is part on, on that committee. So if we have a training or such, hopefully they get that information out. So yeah, uh, if it's, again, we have a lot of representation from the post, how it's distributed, um, you know, if how well it's distributed, that's a different question. So, um, yeah, I do have a lot of folks that say, hey, can I be on your distribution list? Love for you to be on the distribution list, but I need you to get approval from, uh, from one of your, your peers. Because there's, there's some agencies that, that uh, some agency heads that want to make sure I'm the main contact, you communicate through me. And with that, we've also had some disagreements with some agencies because DC has reached out broadly to everyone and then they yell at me, how did they get their, our information? Shoot, I don't know. Uh, you know, so this is the protocol we have. Um, and I, I will share, we do have a very, uh, a very active website that you can go on and you can find out information and all the trainings are posted uh, for the next uh, calendar year on that. And I'll, sh I'll sh share that with you here in a, here in a second as well. But uh, yeah, that's a good question. And you know, again, that's one of the things I struggle with all the time. And I go around last, Last week was talking with the Mid-America Regional Council because the municipalities in Kansas City had no idea. Maybe kind of the same thing. Few people put their hands up. Yeah, I know what FEB is. What do you do? So again, it's, it's a matter of getting out and trying to communicate as much as possible. So if you'd like me to invite, invite me and to talk to some of your other folks, I'd be more than happy to. <laughs> uh, I understand, you can relate then. <laughs> So our third line really is going back to, to exactly what you asked. And this actually has changed the names going forth in the next five years to strategic partners, but to intergovernmental and interagency collaboration and community outreach. And what that is, is basically, um, you know, how we gather people together. Once a month, we have our FEB members come to, to a meeting, which we get about 20% of the members that will, will attend a meeting. The, the meetings are always at a federal location, but usually uh, it varies as far as the location. We've come up here to Fort Leavenworth in the past, past as well. 
Uh, but through that, we also act, we uh, are involved with anything that's interagency inter philanthropic programs. So we oversee the combined federal campaign. I know you all are aware of that, and thank you for getting the posters out in the, the hallways on that. So last year, close to $3 million raised for charities in the, in the Kansas City area. Uh, some of you may be familiar with uh, Day of Caring. We uh, are going into our 25th anniversary of Day of Caring. That was a program that, uh, that we started back in 93 and uh, has grown, was, has uh, in, in the past, uh, we've worked with United Way on that, where it's really kind of a self-maintained program now. Last year we had 600 federal employees working on 28 different projects throughout the, the Kansas City community, and, and again, one up here in the Leavenworth as well. That morning of, uh, of uh, volunteerism was uh, over $100,000 in value to those folks. Some of the other things that, again, going back to how can we get the message out, these are some of the committees, our Regional Wellness Council. Right now we're in the midst of the Maintain Don't Gain campaign. How many of you are familiar with that? That's during the holiday season, the average person puts on five pounds. So we have weekly through our our uh, wellness council, we have weekly uh, suggestions of how to stop that, to try to keep yourself at that. And they, they work at, off, uh, at, throughout the year uh, ways to, to try to make a healthier uh, commu federal community. And that's important. And if you don't have something going on, that, this is one of the biggest things when you're looking to try to attract folks to be, be part of your agency. I know, you know, that's may not be your, your issue a lot, of, a lot of times, but a lot of the, you know, the younger generation are looking for a healthy, uh, healthy workplace. Our small business networking event, we do that on a monthly basis as well. That brings in those small and minority businesses to do a kind of a uh, cup of coffee or a million cups of coffee each year. So we have procurement officers and small businesses so that they can learn how to do business with the government. Um, we have a sustainability committee that uh, is guided by General Services Administration and EPA. How can we leave a smaller footprint uh, as a federal, federal government? Veterans Affairs Committee, again, meets on a monthly basis, goes over what veterans benefits are, you know, are, are happening that month or activities are happening that month or ways that we can make sure that our veterans are taken care of. And they have done a tremendous job in the Kansas City area. I don't know if you're familiar with the homeless uh, uh, situation, the, especially the uh, the uh, veteran homeless in the Kansas City area, it is really other than the folks that absolutely refuse. We've almost eliminated homelessness for veterans in the Kansas City area, and a lot of that is you've, if you've heard of the small houses that are that are going on in s southern Kansas City. It's it a great effort. Um, the Veterans C Affairs Committee was a big part of that. They're a big part of the the two stand downs that we offer e each year. So the Heart America stand down. One in, in Missouri on the springtime, and then uh, one on the Kansas side in the in November. Uh, young government leaders program. So this is kind of an after hours thing, but we again for folks that want to get involved in the government and want to learn and uh, and you know um, uh, network with other other folks, we we organize that program. And again, any volunteer opportunities that we can help uh, uh, help through that. Toys for Tots, obviously. You know, we work with the Marine Corps to try to get boxes out for that. Harvesters food drives or the Feds feeds families. Uh, that's that goes in there. We uh, have have folks do school supplies as well. So again, we're constantly looking for ideas that we can make it a little bit better. So this year, what we're working on: Army Management Staff College rollout. We've been working for five years, and think what's going to happen this year is where we're going to have uh, opportunity for federal agencies to participate in the Army Management. Uh, intermediates and advanced courses. So, and that's, that has been an initiative that the Army Management Staff College has had is because they feel the officers, the military folks need to have that sense of what's going on in the civilian side. So that we hope to, we'd hope to have that rolled out already, but that will be coming in certainly in 2018. Uh, we've just started a FEB leadership development series. So that's a six month program that is led by OPM. Um, and the 16 sessions that they go through, uh, that's again trying to develop our leaders of, of tomorrow. We've started a, a monthly webinar series, similar to what Rod has done here. I mean, a great format to, to get the message out. Again, trying to, we know, you know, we're turning into a virtual world. So how can we make the biggest impact and get the information out the mo most to the, the largest, uh, largest scope of employees? 
Uh, we are starting an interagency mentoring program. Uh, so again, many agencies have a mentoring program, but this is a sense where they can actually get a, a sense of, you know, how people, how employees react in a different agency. You know, one of the biggest impacts or bi biggest benefits that we hear from, uh, from uh, our interagency trainings is just that sense of awareness of what other agencies have the similar problem, or as I told them this morning, you're gonna go back and say, gosh, we're certainly not as screwed up as they are over there. So, you know, you get a sense as far as, you know, this is something that we, we, are, we may all be working on or something that we can fix. And then also next year with our ADR program, instead of uh, hiring outside facilitation, facilitation speakers or uh, monitors, we're going to train a certain amount of our ADR folks to actually put on that. That's going to get uh, what we found is any facilitation is about $20,000. So again, it's a way of saving money for those agencies. Ways you can get a hold of us, kansascity.feb.gov is our website. And you'll find all the, all the events on either the calendar or anything that's active, you'll see right on the side or the event registration. There's also a lot of, uh, and it's not up here, but if you, this event calendar is actually employee discounts now. So if you're looking for a discounted ticket as Slurbon or uh, Worlds of Fun or Silver Dollar City, uh, again, we negotiate that. We have a couple of discount nights at the Royals, so I mean, look on that. You can get season ticket prices for the Chiefs, for example, so, which is usually about 15% cheaper. So you can go on there and get some discounts on that. Uh, we are a national network. So this is the national website. And that will, again, if you find yourself, your next uh, tour of duty is in Atlanta, you can, again, you can find, uh, find that uh, local FEB right there. And that's just feb.gov will get you there. That's pretty much my song and dance. I appreciate your attention, but I'm more than happy to answer any question that I think I can answer. Yes, sir. What is the big number, 41,000 Kansas City? What's the number for your Heartland region? We, technically, we only cover the eight counties. So 41,000 is our number. Okay. Now, our, if you're looking at the four, count, four states, yeah. yeah. We are looking, I, I will tell you, because I used to, my, previous to this, I used to run the, uh, the regional CFC campaign. And Western Kansas and all of Kansas, there are 70,000 federal employees. So I would, I would imagine when you look at, St. Louis has about 30,000. So I mean, when you look at the whole thing, probably 150,000 in the four state area. Yeah, yeah. So I should say that, Again, we're, we're lucky enough that there is a FEB across, across the state in St. Louis. Uh, there are federal executive associations um, in Wichita, uh, Lincoln, and Omaha, slash Omaha, and Des Moines. The difference between the associations and us is basically they don't have paid staff, so they're really they're a, a, uh, just an organization that gets together maybe on a monthly or quarterly basis and just networks. They may, usually, they might have a recognition program, but they, they don't really do any formalized training, so to speak. So we're kind of the, the big brother for, for those areas. So I would also say a lot of my time is also just not necessarily giving guidance, but giving contacts. So if you find yourself retired and you want, you know, you're trying to find information for you know, a, a, an agency in town, or if you, you know, you might find that, hey, I need to find, I need to call someone within the IRS appeals office, you know, you can reach out to me and I can get you that, that contact information. So we work a lot, again, it's not just the, uh, the federal community, we have a lot of, a uh, lot of uh, municipalities call us and say, you know, uh, what, where do we need to go? And, uh, you know, and, and again, uh, kind of vice versa as well. Uh, we work with the congressional offices, so, um, we'll have uh, have the, the one office, you know, we'll have a federal office call us which, you know, who should we talk to in, in the congressional offices or such, so. Okay, thank you, appreciate it, thank you. Thank you all for coming. Our next round bag will be 18 January. It'll be a presentation by the Central Intelligence Agency right here, same time, same place.
Thank you all. Best wishes for a happy holiday. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.